but I'm also discussing two paintings by Mark Malia. I would, I would estimate the date at late 20th century, 19, 1999, something like that. I'm not sure of the date, but there's something like that. Framed in Malta in Gezira by a local framer on a artist board, shop built, shop bought artist board, not salvaged board. Silver effect, leaf distressed. And he's used a acrylic paint, I think, to start off his paintings. And then he's applied panels of clear glass squished onto the painting, giving a really unusual effect. Piece of glass missing there, I'm not going to change it, replace it. You have Lowry style figures, the stick figures, the scarecrow figures. It shows the dependency and fragility of children and mothers. So these are women because they have these costumes and high heels. You have twig like arms and you have slightly timid children, dependent children. They're, they're nevertheless, they're contented and they're, this is a happy scene in my view. But there's a bit more to it than just seeing blobs of colour, you know, there's a bit more to it. So as I say, I thought this is French when I first saw it, until I drilled down into the detail. Um, you, you do find in France, they are not shy of colours and scary faces on some of their art. Um, if you look at Ferdinand Leger, for example, you, you'll see what I, what I mean. And I'm talking again about um, modern, abstract, figurative, contemporary art. You, you can even talk about uh, Picasso, who of course is Spanish, but he lived in France. He started with ordinary art, church buildings, rivers, trees, women, and he migrated to end with the abstract art we all know about. And right in the middle, he went to London and uh, exhibited his first piece in around 1920, and it was called Contemporary Art. You can't call it contemporary art now, 100 years later, so it was contemporary then. So you have to realise the different words, abstract, figurative, modern, impressionistic, contemporary. So this is living artist contemporary, and I think that's my feeling, that living artist contemporary is contemporary. Is it, is it modern art? Yes, it's modern art. Is it abstract? Yes. Is it figurative? Yes. Pollock did the mid-century splashes on the floor. He was he was he developed a character, smoking and drinking and carelessness. And he painted these paints paintings based on what was available in his workshop. His workshop is a is a tip, just cans of paint everywhere. And he would paint these pictures. Lots of big ones for cinemas and banks and collectors and galleries. And what I don't like about Pollock is I, I don't believe he named his pictures before he painted them. This is what I really detest about Pollock. I think he retrospectively named his pictures. I'm assuming it, I don't know. So you'll see a picture with a title. So what I think he did is he made these daubs really carelessly, looked at them and thought, well, it looks a bit like sea. I'll call it the sea. And I think it's really awful, mendacious. So, so you have people like Pollock, and then you have people like uh, Leger, very, very, um, very not known very well, French Normandy artist. And you have this, these, this journey of artists changing their, te their, 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 their characteristic styles of painting. Passmore and Malta is a good, a good, a good example. I bought some um, Passmore books in England this, this time I was there recently. And I was really surprised seeing his, his books. He started off painting really ordinary, realist, visible paintings of, again, rivers, trees, churches, human forms. And he only migrated to the abstract stuff much later in his career. So it's interesting, you have to sort of get this spectrum. Abstract art with Picasso has the sort of caveman look. It has the childlike look. You don't get that with Passmore. His, his abstract is much more measured, calculated in, in scale, and perhaps less spontaneously done. And he was, doing really illustrations, a reproduction. I think when Parsons was doing his prints, sorry, his, his paintings, I think he, in, in his mind, I think he was thinking, oh, I better get this done like this so it can be screen printed easily. I, I think, for example, in, in, the, in the fact he used a few colors to give it away, he was aware to be commercial. He couldn't fill it with colors. 
didn't, I don't think the Casso gave two hoots about the, the printing and the reproductions. And I note that the, the, the Picasso family now is doing more reproductions than Picasso ever did himself for reproducing prints, for reproducing the pottery. So it's a very interesting, very interesting market and a brief video of course isn't enough even to scratch the surface. So we've talked about these pictures, I think they're lovely, distinctive, even though they're small and not a pair, I think they're different sizes. I think that hung in a room in Malta, those are going to, going to look really fantastic. I think they're underpriced. You do find underpriced things in Malta. Hasn't particularly found favour yet. And I think there are some overpriced things in Malta. I see in I see in Malta trans prints of the early oil paintings of the Grand Harbour. I mean obviously the oils are fantastic, but what's the what's the value in having a black and white print of, a, of an oil painting? They were making the prints all through the 19th century, all through the 20th century, all the way through the Edwardian era. You have a black and white print of a warship with Angelo in the letter. The bottom has the engraver's name, the, the, the painter's attribution, the subscriber who it was, who it was engraved for, a date which won't really relate very easily to the time of production. And these are hugely valuable things, but they're so hideously boring. Black and white, often yellowed, in boring frames. Mountains and mountains of them. And they're hugely valuable, but they're so overpriced. This is something that you see. This gives you a message. It's original art. Not a copy, not a, not a print. If you buy a print, you buy the original image. And you get the margin to pad it out. Do you want to see the limited edition number? Do you want to see the title? Do you want to see the artist's name in pencil? You will have, will have signed a pile of 500. And when you see a print or a limited edition with a margin, you're not seeing the actual image, you're seeing the image plus this margin. So I'm, I'm not a great fan of any print or any limited edition. I do have them, but I'm not a great fan. Okay, well, we've talked about a number of things there. Thank you for looking.